So we mentioned in the first video that Nest is really sort of an architecture out of the box that's meant to be used as an abstraction above something like Express. And this architecture is made up of a couple core pieces that we'll talk about across the series. And let's start with modules. You can see that we have an app module that has you know, controllers and providers. You can think of this app module as the root of our application and we can introduce additional modules to our application. Now think of modules as a way to group and encapsulate a closely related set of capabilities. You know, imagine that you know most projects, your modules will probably be for each feature and each of those features might have their own routes, you know, their own business logic. So for example, maybe you'd have a module for users uh, you know, for managing who are the users of your application, be able to create, read, update, delete users. If you were doing some kind of e-commerce app, maybe you'll have, you know, an orders module or a products module. So ultimately your application becomes composed of all these modules and each of these modules will have some kind of dependency on each other, right? So everything pretty much starts at the app module as the root. But modules can also depend on other modules. For example, an orders module, maybe it depends on a products module and so on, right? So ultimately what you end up with is some kind of tree structure that always has to have at least one root module. So back in our code, let's go ahead and create a new module to add to our application. And remember in the first video, we installed a Nest CLI. You can actually use that to generate a lot of the new files for you and it'll help I'll wire things up easily. So you can use the command nest generate module and then give it the, the name of the resource that you're trying to create. In this case, we're, let's call it ninjas because we're, we're trying to create a ninjas module. You can also use nest G for short, which is the same thing. And if you pay attention to the output here, you'll see that it says it created a new file, ninjas module, and it also created an update in our app module. Notice that there is now a new import here uh, of the ninjas module. So it's actually starting to build that dependency tree for us automatically. So that's sort of lesson number one is as you're creating new modules, make sure that it's being added to the imports array of another module. And that's effectively how things are registered in Nest.js. Same thing for uh, controllers and providers as we you know create those we're going to register them to the module that it belongs to. So a natural next step for us is to add to our ninjas module and add, you know, a new controller and a new service for this. Now, similarly, you can use nest G controller ninjas. So similarly, you can see that a new controller file was created and it also updated our ninjas module to register that controller. Now let's also do nestg service back in the terminal down here, ninjas, because we want to add a provider. Again, same thing, new files, uh, updated module. And you can kind of see some of the benefits of the CLI here where, you know, it starts to inform you of what's a recommended folder structure, what's a recommended file naming convention. You can, of course, do all of these uh, manually if you wanted to, but it can save you a lot of time in terms of, you know, generating files and hooking things up. Now I should mention that there is also a CLI command that allows you to generate an entire resource along with, you know, controllers and providers all in one command. So for example, you can do SG resource and provide that name of your resource. So maybe let's do something different such as users. And then uh, you can also specify the dry run command if you'd like. But if I run this, you'll see that it'll ask you what transport layer do you use? You can, you know, pick REST API, GraphQL. Let's take a look at REST API and then I'll hit a yes here for the one to generate CRUD endpoints. And you'll notice that when I hit yes here, it'll create quite a bit more of those files. It'll have the controller, it'll have the service, but a bunch of other things such as details and entities. You can see in the generated users controller that it generated you know, all of the CRUD endpoints, great read, update, delete, as well as the underlying uh, service methods for those. Now, I would only use that resource command if you're already fully aware of the fundamentals of Nest. You know, otherwise it, it's going to spit out a bunch of boilerplate for you that you might not be familiar with. So in the following videos, I'll walk you through 
you know, explaining to you what all of these little things are, what are, what do these decorators do, and how to set it up from scratch if you needed to. But once you do have those fundamentals, you know, that's a CLI command that you can use to get things up and running very quickly, creating a bunch of files and hooking things up for you. Now, in the next video, we're going to cover uh, the controller, how to add, you know, new custom routes with differing HTTP methods and how to respond to requests. So make sure to head on over to the next video and I'll see you there.